how sometimes you gotta go somewhere that you're not too familiar with? And you might use your GPS on your phone or whatever, and you open up the app and you see uh, like where you are, you're like the little dot, and you use the map so you don't get lost, right? You use the map so you don't get lost. Now the method I'm gonna show you today is very similar to that, because when we're using our guitar and we're trying to get around the fretboard, it can be very easy to get lost. Today I'm going to show you how to do what I call staying in the pocket so you never get lost and you always know where you're going next. Alright guys, so in the last video, which went way longer than I expected in the filming because I expected to have this information in that video, but it's okay, you got an extra video out of it, I get more time to explain what I'm trying to explain here. I showed in that last video the concept of not just going through these patterns with no purpose whatsoever, but instead finding the major scale within the pattern and trying to stay musical by paying attention with our ears to what's going on and at the same time adding rhythmic qualities to what we're playing and trying to make melody and whatnot. This is what I call the musicality factor. Because we're musicians, we need to keep it musical. This is number one. Our ears are king. Our ears tell our fingers what to do. Keeping that in mind, in this final video, I'm gonna show you how to stay in the pocket and I'm gonna explain what that means right now. Suppose we're starting on the second pattern, the pattern I showed in the second video, which is this one. Because we're playing this pattern right now, we consider our home base. We can create a sort of, right here we are on the neck, we can create a sort of pocket, if you will, a pocket where, anyway, you'll see what I mean, All right? So suppose I'm improvising in our home base here. I showed in the last video how we can interface and go into the next pattern over. So we just stepped out of our home base, or this is the pocket, we stepped out of the pocket and we went to an adjacent pattern, we came out of it, we played over here a little, and then we came back to home base in the pocket. Here's the thing, there's another pattern on this side, isn't there? So if I'm improvising, I could go up, to home base and now I can go down to the next pattern over which is pattern one from the first video back so if you visualize that whatever pattern we're on right now is home base and then we have a pattern on one side and we have a pattern on one side so we have basically a three pattern cluster we have the pattern we're on and we have the two adjacent patterns and we can visualize that we're in the pocket and we have two adjacent patterns that we can go to. So we're thinking always in terms of the one particular pattern that we're on right now, but we have always the option to slide over into the next one and come back. So let's do that on a different, starting with a different pattern as our home base. Why not use pattern five, which was the last pattern that I, did a video on, which is over here. Let's improvise. So as I'm playing here, if I wanna to move to an adjacent pattern, I gotta visualize what is next door. So I'm in the pocket, what's over here? Hmm, I'm on pattern five. Pattern five was the last pattern, right? So next to it is going to be pattern one again, but an octave higher. So how do I slide into that pattern? Well, let's, let's see. Oh, I'm in the other pattern now, kind of. Let's go back into that pocket. go down to the pattern below it that's adjacent. Let's 
we're back home. Back down. I don't want this to slip past you, the potential that we have here. Whatever pattern you're on, so long as you develop the ability to be able to visualize what pattern is next to it on either side, you can always go up and down the neck as much as you want because once you get over to the next pattern, you can visualize it like, okay, I'm stepping out of the pocket, but I'm gonna come back. Or you can visualize that pattern that's next door as, okay, I'm gonna make this my new home base and I can go up from here and down from here as I want. And then you're able to just freely go up and down the neck, which is what I'm gonna do right now. In this next portion, a little bit less talking and a little bit more action, I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm gonna start in the first pattern I'm gonna kinda of talk a little bit my way through it, but I'm just gonna play, all right? Let's go. I'm gonna step out the pocket, up one. Back home. I'm gonna go down, pattern five. Pattern five is below pattern one. It just repeats down the octave. Back home. Back into pattern five. Stepping out the pocket. Back to pattern one. I'm in the pocket. I'm stepping up. I'm gonna make this my new home base, my new pocket. I'm focused here. I wanna go down one. Pattern one. Back home. Stepped out a little bit there. But I'm, I just reached for a note, but I'm still here in the pocket. Next adjacent pattern up. This is my new home base. Step down one. Go up one. You know what, this is my new pocket. Step down one. Pattern lower right. I'm gonna go to the adjacent pattern. And you see how we could do that like that. All right guys, so I'm pretty exhausted on this topic for right now, but there's a lot more to be said about getting around the neck, which is why I'll be adding insights on this channel as I get them or as I remember stuff that I've already learned through the years that I kind of take for granted at this point. I'll try to share it with you guys as I go. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, you can put them in the description below and I'll be glad to help you out with that. So I hope this helps you massively. I've tried to create a resource here where this is kind of like what I wish I had when I first started playing the guitar. Back in the day, I learned these patterns, I studied these patterns from other people online, I think, but they were just kind of like, here goes the pattern and memorize it. <laughs> and I'm kind of doing that too, but I'm trying to help you to realize that how to go about finding the musicality factor and to be able to move from one to the other, I think is really critical and we want to develop that freedom across the neck so we can play the guitar from our hearts. I appreciate you taking the time to learn from this channel. If you like the videos and you feel that they've been helpful to you, I'd be so grateful if you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you like the video, I really appreciate a thumbs up. It really encourages me. It lets me know I'm on the right track. I thank you so much for watching. Remember to play the guitar from the heart and have fun with that especially as you get to play up and down your neck with freedom. See you next time.
Oh boy. One last thing real quick, guys. I almost forgot to be able to go to another key. All you have to do is keep those patterns in the same order that they are and just move them over. So if you're in the key of C, key of D is two frets over, right? So just move your root note from C to D and everything will stay in the same order. So like this, you're in the key of C. That's the pattern next to it. Key of D will be like this. Here's our root, D is here. So we just use the same patterns. Pattern one. Pattern two is here. Pattern three is gonna be right here. Right? Pattern four is gonna be right here. And so on and so forth. So long as you have the ability to go from one pattern to the next within the same key, and you know, learn how to get from pattern two to three and one, pattern three to two and four, like that, with all of them, then you'll be able to transpose to different keys with no problem. I highly suggest that as you're first learning, to stay in one key so you don't confuse yourself. And with that, again, I'll see you again next time, this time. Play the guitar from the heart and have fun with that.